Hi, uh, welcome. In my series of lectures in computer science, today we are going to talk about sorting. Uh, sorting is a very fundamental problem that occurs many times in computer science and it has many practical applications and you see it again and again in, in various uh, aspects of uh, software design. There are many situations in which you will have to sort a given list of elements. Mathematically speaking, the problem is rather straightforward. You are given n elements, a1, a2, up to up to a n. You can assume there are n numbers that are given to you. What you would like to do is that you would like to rearrange them in a certain order. So assume in an increasing order such that a1 prime is less than equal to a2 prime is less than equal to a n prime. So, so basically given n numbers, you would like to arrange them in an increasing manner so that you go from the smallest to the largest the smallest being on the left hand side and the largest being on the right hand side uh, as an example consider you are given a collection from minus 5 11 minus 13 1 7 what you would like to do is that you would like to find the smallest one minus 13 then the next smallest one minus 5 then 1 then 7 then 11 so given this input you would like to arrange the output in in a sorted way and that will be the output okay so and I would also like to mention here that sorting is not limited to a collection of numbers even though I took that example you can also apply it to a bunch of you can essentially apply it to any thing that can be compared so for example I could apply it to to a bunch of strings that look like this March 1st or January 1st 2013 2012 uh, 0 1 10 10th of January 2012 2010 9 3 so if you wanted to arrange these dates in an increasing order where you where the where the earliest date comes first well the output will be 2010th date 2010 9 3 followed by 2012 date followed by 2013 date right in an increasing order so essentially sorting is not limited to that the next section is why should I care and that's a very important question why do you care about sorting let's consider some practical examples where it actually comes up so consider uh, that one case where it definitely comes up is that let's say an exam is conducted uh, across na the nation so as an example SAT is con conducted in the United States and in India we have a similar exam called IIT where a lot of students sit and take the exam so let's say 100,000 students took the exam and uh, you have compiled the results and you have the results in the computer and what you would like to do is that you would like to sort these students such that you have to find out who, score, who is the first rank, who got the first rank in the exam, so on and so forth, who scored the last rank in the exam. And to be able to do that, what you need is you need a collection of 100,000 numbers. So let's consider the exam was out of 200. The guy who scored 200 will be at the bottom until and unless the guy who scored 0 or close to 0 will be the last person. And that, that will be the sorted order as an example so does that make sense so that is one example given given a national exam where a lot of students sat took the exam you want to rank those students that's one example consider another more familiar example so you log on to Facebook and you are expecting a feed a news feed on your profile well how does it work if you if you would notice Facebook would would always show you in your feed the new stuff always at the top so it'll say oh blah 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 I am happy which is a feed from some friend of yours and if if today is let's say uh, March 1 for let's assume today is March 1 then then the person who posted that close to March 1 your time let's say this is 7 p.m will always show up at the top and a post that was from 
from let's say February 28 10 a.m. will be much rather at the bottom so Facebook ensures that you always get the fresh news feeds by sorting them in a decreasing order so the new stuff always is at the top so what would it take for Facebook to be able to do that well to be able to do that what Facebook does is that when I po when I log in and I post something on Facebook let's say I post Mayank I just um, I just post my name randomly on my profile what will go is that this post will submit it into Facebook database and it will associate a timestamp with it so it will say oh on February 28 on February 28 2013 this post was submitted at 7 or 2 p.m. and then later when my friend logs in some of my friend log one of my friend logs in it collects feed from all his friends one of those friends is me it then has all the feeds but then it needs to sort all these feeds in a decreasing manner so all the fresh come at the top and all the ones that is from a fair friend that was posted late at a later time will show at at the bottom so does that make sense so that's one way it works uh, so another example is is Google how Google works so when you search something on Google what will Google do so you go on to Google and you search something let's say you search oh Taj Mahal and you click submit button on Google and it comes up with results and you click this what happens it goes and it's in its database it, it uses something called indexing so for every keyword query it has it looks up the index and finds the relative the results so one of the results that come come out is Taj Mahal Wikipedia page so the Wikipedia page for Taj Mahal and then later down it'll be some some Taj Mahal restaurant and it's it's very likely that you are not actually searching for that restaurant you are very likely searching for the monument Taj Mahal and and so what Google does is that I mean Google would be rather useless if it showed you all the results in any random order uh, so internally it has a score for every result for every query it's called an index so it builds for your query it computes the the index uh, it computes the uh, let's call it a score for every result so let's say this score has a score of 0.9 another result has a score of 0.8 which can be the score of the relevance that Google thinks is relevant to your query and then this is let's say 0 0.001 so then Google gets all these results but shows you in a decreasing order of relevance way so that the most relevant stuff to you comes at the bottom and the better a uh, search engine does this job the better search engine it is and Google is one of the search engines that is good because they got this number right and most of the times it shows you relevant stuff in a decreasing order of relevance way so that's that's how that's how important sorting is to Google uh, for example so uh, another example where sorting is important is that you can sort something simply because you can search it easier later so consider this in a library the books are generally kept in a sorting or sorted order why is that it is because so that you can later easily find a piece a book in the library if all the books were kept in a random order in the library how hard it would be to go and look up for a book you literally have to search every book but because they are kept in a very alphabetically sorted order it's easier to find stuff so one of the reasons why things are sorted is that while you are storing them you keep them in a sorted order so that later it's easy to retrieve them uh, well I know this because I have trouble finding car keys in my own house so I'm speaking from experience here so in this lecture what will we cover in this lecture we will uh, cover sorting in great detail because it is a very fundamental problem in computer science a lot of research and a lot of smart brains have gone into finding good algorithms for it in the next three lectures I will focus specifically on three of the algorithms three specific algorithms will be insertion sort quick sort and merge sort 
insertion sort is an example of a bad algorithm. So if you remember from our lectures on algorithms, a bad algorithm is one that either takes too long to run on a given data set or consumes too much memory. Well, insertion sort is a bad algorithm because it takes too long and we will see how bad it how bad it actually is. As the data set gets bigger, insertion sort takes too long. Then we'll also talk about quick sort and merge sort and they are good algorithms. They take much lesser time than insertion sort. One thing though is that insertion sort is very easy to understand and uh, when humans sort something like a pair of cards, they do it like insertion sort. So we'll talk about all that and we will implement them in Python. We will uh, talk about their pseudocode and we'll run them on a large data set. And when we'll run them on the large data set in the last lecture, we will actually compare how worse insertion sort performs when compared to the good algorithms quick sort and merge sort. So keep watching and thank you for watching this lecture. Bye.